Today we're back in the Tour Van Bay comparing utility iron from 2022. We've got Thomas here to hit the shots. We've got a total of eight miles in front of us here to test using TrackMan. We'll tell you all the details and all the information you need to know. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Maholt of Second Swing Golf, joined by Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter here at Second Swing. And another kind of ultimate wrap-up comparison of 2022, we've got utility irons today, or driving irons, um, a, a different category, not a popular club probably 10 to 20 years ago, but growing in popularity now, um, and a largely used off the tee, but also uh, used a ton off the ground in terms of long par fours, par fives, so uh, becoming a popular option in the bag, especially of maybe players with high swing speeds. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice one to get the ball out in the fairway, mm -hmm. uh, especially on short par fours, yeah. uh, even I mean, a, a hole that's designed where you've got water going across the middle of the fairway, yeah. you've got a bunker out there that you're trying to stay short of, and yeah. you're trying to precisely leave yourself a good yardage in for your second yeah. shot. Yeah, and uh, the way these are designed, most of them, I mean, it's they're they're flying lower than a hybrid or a high lofted fairing would. Yep. Um, and they're also a little bit more workable in the sense that a player like yourself that wants to maybe work a draw off the tee, for example, uh, you're able to do that a little bit more with this club versus a hybrid or a high lofted fairing wood. So today we have eight models here, Thomas, um, from a variety of brands. Um, we've got some really good ones here. And I think it's important to note each of the models, but also that they're a little bit different in loft. We have a range from about 18 to about 21 degrees here. Right, yeah, so we have majority of them are the three, three hybrid or mm -hmm. three utilities. Yeah. Um, for TaylorMade, we, can, we only have the two. The UDI is only available in a two. Yeah. And so that's why those ones are just going to have a little less loft. But I will swing the same speed. Yeah. And we'll kind of compare the numbers. I would anticipate a little hotter ball speed with less loft on, the, right. on those clubs and maybe going a little bit further. Be interesting, interesting to see. So just to list off all eight of them, we've got the I crossover from Ping, the most recent release. We've got the Cobra King Utility. We've got the Callaway X Forged UT. Our two Titleist models, the U505 and T200. Our two tailor-made models, the Stealth UDI and the P790. And then lastly, the Mizuno Pro Fly High. So um, Thomas, you've been fitting golfers into this this year. Um, any of these models in particular stand out, or I guess any of them that other than the tailor-mades maybe that might have a little bit higher ball speed because of loft. Anything else that you're maybe looking forward to seeing? Yeah, I mean, so you mentioned the, the Titleist. We've got two models there yeah. too, the U505 and we've got the T200. Yeah. I would expect those two clubs to fly a little differently, Yeah. especially the U505, the way that it's designed. Yeah. Maybe a little higher, a little more spin. I think I'm intrigued to see because, you know, this is one of my favorite clubs to test. Yeah. Because I, I like to try and find something that I can get off the tee and get pretty pretty nicely. Yep. It doesn't get hit a lot, but it's always nice to have it in yeah. the bag. It's an important club for sure. And yep. I think one thing, you noted the U505, that might be the biggest sole uh, design of the models we have here. So should be interesting to test. Thomas, you ready to hit a bunch of shots here? Let's do it. Ooh, yeah. That's good. Wow, look at that spin. That is low spin, I feel like. It is quite low spin. That was hit pretty good too, wow. Yeah, this looks a little lower. Now it is also a two. Goodness gracious. Just no movement, really. Yeah, but it's definitely flying lower. It's launching lower, and its peak height seems like it's lower yeah. on both of those so, so far. That looked like a good swing. Is that club longer, you think? Is it possible? It is. Yeah. It's got to be.
that whole chain goes about four degrees higher. Yeah, holy smokes though, that thing is straight. That felt good. Yeah, that's a good ball. That was, yeah, that was launched. That's probably the farthest carry distance so far. All right, so Thomas, four clubs down, four very different clubs. Um, uh, one thing we should note too, the shafts, they are all the kind of, I guess, stock stiff offerings for each utility iron model. So they're not gonna be all the same with a bonded club. It's tough to make that, that happen. Right. Um, but wanted to get your feedback on those first four. So that was Mizuno Pro Fly High, uh, the TaylorMade Stealth UDI, the TaylorMade P790, and then the uh, Titleist U505. And even from here, the sound and the look is very different on all of them. Yeah, so you know the two smallest were both the two tailor-made ones. Yeah. Looking down at them, the, the the smallest sole, smallest kind of top line. Looking down at it, the Mizuno Fly High intrigued me a little bit, knowing that it's a three iron, but yeah. it also had the same spin rates as the two irons for yeah. the tailor-made, mm -hmm. which I thought was very interesting. Yeah, yeah. I think looking at the so there's and then the U five hundred five is just a much bigger club head profile. A lot of mass down low so and then plus it was the highest lofted yeah. of those so you kind of imagined that's cg launch, and loft yeah, right cg yep. and loft really launched that thing into the air a little yep. bit higher more spin so i have the numbers up on the full screen and uh you can see really the first three mizuno pro fly high stealth and p790 pretty similar across the board not a ton of difference um i think we noticed the launch we got a lot lower with the tailor mates again loft related a little bit we yep. have 17 with the P790, 18 with the Stealth UDI. But the spin is actually, I mean, we're talking five, six, nine RPM uh, difference in the three of them. Right. So the, the spin rate is very comparable. The, the, the Mizuno spins pretty low for, I think, a 19 degree iron, I think. Um, Correct. But it is funny at, at the end of the day how all four of these are, the carry distance is within a couple yards. You have 232.8 on the U505, you have 236 on the Stealth. They're just getting there in drastically different ways as we look at the height, we look at the uh, launch angle, we look at even the landing angle, just completely different clubs. Yeah, I mean, the U505, yeah. the, the, just looking at those numbers, just looking yeah. at the height and the landing angle, yeah. it is, uh, it's a very, very different golf club. Yeah, yeah. We're oh, talking, yeah. you got an extra 50 feet. <laughs> and another 13 degrees in yep. landing angle. Yeah, so, and it's yeah. funny because the distance on the carry is actually very similar. And of course, right. the rollout effect uh, kind of hurts the total distance number, if you will, on the U505. But it's it's just a different manner of getting there, right? If someone is a slow spin player and needs a utility arm that has a little bit more spin and, and loft to it to get the ball in the air, U505 is a great option. Um, that's where you could see this performance work in someone's bag. But, um, all right, and then just quickly on the dispersion, uh, pretty, I mean, nothing crazy jumps out, really. It's right, just, I mean, you leave, it on, straight. you leave it on carry distance, there you see they all look pretty similar, then maybe switch it just to total distance, yeah, and that's where that. you'll see that yep. 505 being, you know, significantly shorter. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, it's it's kind of what I was expecting. I maybe wasn't quite expecting that much of a difference. You right. were talking, you know, 800 RPMs, spin. Yeah. I mean, you're talking 14 yard total distance sh shorter. Yeah because of the, the spin and yeah. the way the club's designed. But mm -hmm. it's the U505 is great for stopping power. So yeah. You almost could play it off the turf. Right, and you could, and it could still be very effective in going after a green if you need to be with that club. So last four here, we'll go. We'll stick with Titleist to start with your T200 there um, after the U505. That should, be, that should be a good one to look at. All right. Well, that sounded different, didn't it? I mean, it wasn't the best swing, but and we kept one in there that was farther right than that. All right. That was a better swing. Mm, let's do that a little bit. A different sound. Oh, yeah. 
Oh yeah. yeah. Four or five. That's four. One more. Felt good. That might be pretty good. Almost the same as the last shot. It's similar to the last shot, not as far left. So Thomas, the last four models there you've got in your hand, uh, T200, uh, the Callaway X4 GT, Cobra King Utility, and then the I crossover. So talk to me about those four and maybe how they fit in in the, in the line here in terms of look and feel. Yeah, I mean, after hitting the U505 going to the T200, this looked more like a traditional iron looking yeah. down that, while the U505 maybe a little bit more a hybrid like yeah. to look at. Sure. The others were looking very good looking down at. Uh, I did notice maybe a little more loft, a little higher bowl flight with the UT, Explores yeah. util Utility. Um, that'd be interesting to see the, the numbers. But yeah, these were all very good. I'd say that I cross over at the end, a little larger from heel to toe. Maybe inspires yeah. just a little bit more confidence. Okay. Maybe not quite as com compact to say as a T200 or yeah. a P790 UDI. Sure, a little bit longer blade length there. Yep. Uh, and then we should note the x 4 GT, I believe, was the highest loft of the test here. So we had a 17 degree uh, P790. We had, I think the 18 degree was also uh, the Stealth. Yep. And then I think the rest were in that 19 to 20 window with the exception of uh, the x 4 GT. So right. we yep. had a kind of a range there, but I think we'll talk about the numbers and it'll be reflected there too. I got to touch on real quick here. The last two clubs I hit are also adjustable. Yeah. So that's one thing to keep in mind. You know, you, if you're looking for gapping purposes, yeah. You know, the King Utility has been the only adjustable drive and iron for a long time. Yeah. Well, now the I crossover also yeah. is adjustable. I think that's yeah. going to be a good benefit for Ping too. Yeah. Yeah. Really good benefit for both Cobra and Ping, and then also in the fitting bay here, we can help golfers get a little bit more dialed in, um, maybe compared to some other models out there that you really don't have the adjustable housel with. So, all right, data here in front of us. We've got all eight clubs up there, um, five good shots with each one. So Thomas, walk us through, see, um, tell us what you see. Right, well, we mentioned that the two tailor-made irons, we only had them in two irons. Yeah. Everything else is a three. Um, so I'm not surprised that the ball speed with those two is the fastest. Yeah. It's not like it's a lot faster. Right. You know, we're talking just half two, a mile an yeah. hour, not, e not even, compared to say U505 there. Um, but yeah, it's just a little faster. You'll notice the efficiency was the hottest there. Yeah. It's kind of to be expected. And then also the launch angle was the lowest with those right. two as well. Pretty comfortably too. Yep. Um, and then I think we talked about spin a little bit. I'm just looking through the numbers here. And in terms of spin, we have those, the two tailor maids lowest again, but I think the the eye crossover spinning as much as it did was a little bit surprising, I think. Granted, it is a 20 degree club, but yeah. we saw some extra spin there, and then the U505 is just that much more spin. Um, with, I mean, I, th I think that club is really a high launch, high spin club, even in the utility <laughs> category. Right, and I think you know, that's just, say it now, let's estimate the Stealth UDI, P790, the them being twos. If they were three irons, I think this spin rate would probably would have probably been right around about 3,100 yeah. RPMs. So kind of close to like the T200 mark. Yeah. Um, that's yep. the only reason it's spinning a little less is because the loft. But you'll notice I really didn't pick up any distance. So even with my speed, I'm getting a little bit of a dimi diminishing return with playing, hitting a club that's got too little loft yeah. on it. Sure. And I will tell you, my driving iron in my bag is not a two iron, it's a three iron. Yeah. For that exact reason. I actually lose a little bit at the end because you lose a little bit of carry distance. Right. Well, and on a lot of courses around here in Minnesota too, it's not, you're not going to get actually, you know, 35 yards or 25 yards of rollout actually. It'll, it'll land softer. The conditions are a little bit, right. um, you know, they don't allow for rollout like that. So a 235 carry might actually be 245 or 250 in total distance. 
Whereas some of these other clubs, when you carry it, you know, 236, for example, the T200, that might produce a little bit more distance in the end. So um, that, and then I think I'm looking over at the height column here and I see some, I mean, one clear outlier. We've talked about U505 already, but I mean, you have nothing over a hundred feet <laughs> except for the yeah. U505 at 119 feet. So there's clearly some extra, you know, technology in there. The center of gravity is way lower and bigger sole. And we see some really high launch and uh, steeper landing angle there compared to everything else by a wide margin. Yeah, the I crossover was the next, and that's you know, was that 25 yeah. feet difference. Then. Right. So it was the only one that was landing angle was 40 plus. Right. And you can see it was 40, 46. Right. So it's, so, it's almost a different base. Yeah. It's it's, it it's it's. I think Tylus has done a really good job of, you know, m differentiating the two <laughs> models. Um, because I think there's like, there's something to be said a little bit there about TaylorMade having P790 and Stealth UDI so close together um, with each other on the in the numbers, but then you have Titleist T200 and U505 giving you totally different performance. Right. Maybe the distance is similar, but the way it gets there is so different, and it can help you know cover a wider range of golfers. I think. Yeah, I mean, if you're if you're a Titleist fan and you come in and you, you don't get fit and you just pick up a driving iron and you happen to pick up the U505 instead of the T200 and yeah. you're looking for something that's launch, launch a little lower, you're yeah. going to be in for shock. Right, yeah, exactly. It's a completely different ball flight. Yeah, it's, so that, I think that's a big takeaway for me is just how easy to launch and um, how much higher the U505 was flying compared to everything else. And even at, you know, I think it's 20 degrees, even at 20 degrees, um, it's still, you know, comfortably higher than, say, the X4GT, which is at 21, or yep. any of the other 20-degree miles up there. Yeah, that's that's a really good point. X4GT, 21, launch angle, 12. Yep. U505, I think yeah. you said 20? Yeah. 14.6. Mm -hmm. So that is the CG that's helping that bull get up in right. the air, launch mm -hmm. a little higher. Yeah. And then, uh, lastly, we should probably talk, too, about a little bit that dispersion map a little bit. I know, again... When we go to this, we kind of talk about how it's Thomas's golf shots. It's not your golf shots, the viewer. Um, but we saw just, I think we have to talk about a little bit about the consistency on the distance there. We always like to talk about that, especially someone that might be having this iron in the bag. Somebody that's usually a little bit better player wants consistency out of that club and not the kind of the jumper or the yep. wide range of distances. So there is a couple out there that are pretty good in that category. Yeah, so this is, uh, so this kind of club, you're, you're not going to see a real tight tolerance from north to south. Right. It's not built that um, way necessarily, right. like a you know a, a blade iron, right? It's not the same thing. Yeah. Now, it's it's more of a fairway finder. Yeah. I mean, if you've got a tolerance of 15, 20 yards, sure. plus or minus, it's in the fairway. Yeah. It's it's not like you're trying to hit it in the green. Now, maybe yeah, maybe with U five hundred five is where you might want to just a little bit more kind of north to south. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Just going to come into the green and land for sure. you. Um, so that's carry distance. Let's check out total distance. So you kind of see that, right? Yeah. U five hundred five, right there, that light blue. Um, what was a little bit more mm -hmm. on the total distance there. Um, U505, sorry, the wrong color, P790, U5, U505 was the yeah. red yeah. there. And you can see the white there, those pro, the pro fly high as well. Yeah. So, um, But yeah, and I think one thing to also note, the X4GT in terms of left to right, pretty narrow there too. I think that might be the winner in terms of uh, how straight the ball is flying on average uh, here. But I think, you know, like you said, and always we'll continue to say, you know, you won't know how a player responds and how well they hit in terms of the dispersion map until they come in. Mm -hmm. We just can see with the numbers, certain trends did emerge here today um, that I think would probably stay true in, in the Bay with about any player. I think if you put them in a U505 versus a T200, for example, I think you'd see those differences start to show up. Right, yeah, the results are player dependent. Yeah. That's why it's important to come in the second swing and get fit Especially right. if you're looking at that, that gapping in your bag. If you're trying to find something to replace your longest iron in your bag mm -hmm. or even like your, your shortest fairy wood. Yeah. These utility irons, if you've got some speed, if you're if you're trying to maybe get a little rid of that left shot, yeah. they're a great option for right. players. One other thought too is a lot of these are actually available in multiple lofts. So you could in theory have like your iron set up to maybe five iron and then go four, three in the utility irons, for example. So. Uh, make sure you come in and get fit and to get those questions answered for your game. One of our experts will take care of you and make sure you have the right clubs in your bag to help you play your best. So, Thomas, thank you for joining, giving us all the information. And golfers, if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel. You give this video a like and you tell us in the comments which of these utility irons is either in your bag or your favorite.